Hello guys! Welcome back to Not Just Mecha! It's Marco here, and today we talk about painting for competitions in a video that feels like a new beginning! This video is a part a prequel to the last release where I showed you in a live stream the advanced stages of the work on this beautiful bust by Mindwork Games, meant to give you the full overview of this paint job, part an inspirational pep talk for all the painters out there thinking about joining a competitive painting event, and part me shamelessly bragging about my performance at the World Model Expo. I feel that, in this case, showing the final product before discussing the practical steps is even more important than usual, because here the whole figure is based on a special effect coming from the parallel and opposed environmental lights of heaven and hell, that are not extremely obvious in the initial stages of the work. Plus, for the sake of speed, I skipped some logic steps here and there. So I hope that uh, seeing uh, the trick in action can give you a better understanding of the choices I'm making along the way, all taken with in mind the goal of creating a piece that the viewer cannot stop uh, moving around. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page up here, where I publish uh, the real-time footage of my videos and extra cool stuff. Thanks a million, guys! I want to play a little game with the veterans of the channel, try to find what I'm doing differently from my usual workflow. I know, I constantly change my approach, but at this point you know the method behind the apparent madness. Then we can discuss those differences at the end of the video. The work starts way before colors and brushes. These modern display kits are extremely well designed and incredibly clean out of the box, but there are still junctions that need to disappear, and a few rough spots that need to be smoothed out with the combined action of fine sandpaper and putty, and the creamy compound that I obtain mixing epoxy putty with isopropyl alcohol easily solves every possible finishing problem. Check this old but really complete video up here for a deep dive into building and preparing complex kits and figures. As it should be, all this work disappears under a coat of black primer, leaving no traces of its existence and bringing the kit as close as possible to the master sculpture. I always start painting with some kind of value sketch in place, but even if the mechanical process is basically always the same, aka a simple breaking the flatness of the black primer with brush, airbrush, or in case I don't need a super precise positioning, a spray can of grey or white paint, the meaning and function of this stage is always a bit different. Here I'm fixing on the model the general rough structure of my light setting. In this particular case, shapes and volumes are a secondary concern, and all my attention goes to the angle, direction and intensity of my two virtual, parallel and opposed environmental lights, that again are the main storytelling engine of this piece, and have the power to visually alter the real shapes of these volumes. At this point, in my mind, the model is more or less finished. <laughs> I'm not joking, the most difficult part is done. Every future step is just a consequence of this first layer that locked in place the simplified structure of my mental image of the final look. I can feel it and enhance it with colors, textures and extra levels and types of contrast but it's just a snowballing process of adding and refining stuff already set by these solid foundations. 
And that's precisely why I can safely and loosely use the airbrush to quickly set the general tones and the global structure of the color scheme. Using a gentle touch and translucent layers, I cannot really cover, hide or erase anything, quickly setting a ton of visual information with just a couple of super simple steps. Working with these delicate overlays, even the feared overspray stops to be an issue, because its singular local impact is almost invisible, especially when all the surrounding tones are in place, and I can literally run at light speed through this initial, let's be honest, less exciting stage. And for the same reasons and the same logic flow, I can use products like GW Contrast, where I need a stronger impact, or simply more precise outlines around complex, well separated details. Yep, you can use contrast on your competition models. I talked with a lot of advanced painters during this weekend at the expo, and I can tell you that there is still a ton of resistance around these new tools, and I really don't understand why, especially in a professional environment, where extra speed and efficiency is always a nice bonus. I used to take advantage of this kind of fluid consistencies and transparencies way before the advent of GW Contrast, mostly using inks as a base for my translucent, highly saturated mixtures. So I'm for sure a biased target for a pre-made product that does exactly what I like straight from the bottle. But still, the message to the painting community should always be Use whatever you need to get to the result. The final result is the only thing that matters. And if you don't paint a mini zone video for a living, nobody knows or cares about how you got there. And this is true also in the competitive environment. And this model is kind of the proof of this idea. So if something suits your workflow, add it to your arsenal without a second thought. And with this elephant out of the room, we can move to the topic of competitions. While you can see the process of locking the blocks of colors unfolding in its crazy simplicity. Remember, this is just a simple base for the brushwork. It doesn't need to be perfect. The most important thing I have to say about competitions is please don't make my same silly mistake of waiting for years to find the guts and feel ready to participate. Events are incredibly fun, inspiring and instructive, because you can see your production in real life next to the work of your fellow painters. Processing this information through memory or pictures is absolutely not the same. Also because most of the time models look really different in person, and you can learn way more stuff from this real life comparison than from hours of videos or photo scrolling. Plus you get the chance to talk with the artists and the judges and directly ask for suggestions and feedback that, again, are not the same through pictures. And here is a revelation to alleviate your anxiety even more. The stakes are almost zero. In the worst case scenario, you don't get a medal. That, if you are not a professional in pathological need for approval, shouldn't really impact in any way your perception of your work and art. So please, get on board, because we all want to see new faces and new cool ideas on the shelves. With a super delicate rendering of the main colors in place, I can move to the fun part of adding tones to the virtual lights. The correct vectors and intensities are all there, with a minimal loss of light, that will become my space to add extra contrast with the brush, when I'll generate definition painting the higher mid-tones and the extreme levels of light. 
but since on the armor I'm aiming to a reflective metallic sheen, I need to bring back some extreme values with white ink to really make the contrast pop. The blue light from the heavens is the simplest one, because it shares the cold temperature and the desaturated feel of the sketch, so a quick control filter on the upper light areas is enough to reveal its character. But I have to be more tactical on the left uh, fiery side, because saturated orange tones don't mix well with the bluish hues I have in place, or better, they don't mix well when you want to keep the powerful saturation. The solution is to bridge the chromatic flow with yellow, that interacting with the cold tones underneath will create a green transition through a direct uh, optical mix. Then I can go crazy with orange and red to make the light more and more fiery and hellish. I close the preparatory work with a quick light oil wash over the armor, using uh, several dark tones with uh, different temperatures to match the local sensations of each major area. Basically warm tones on the left, neutral in the middle and uh, the cold ones on the right. In this case bringing out the sharp panel lines of the armor is just a nice bonus, because they are large and well defined and simple to catch with standard paints. My main goal is to add a bit of foundational grime and grittiness to the armor, and make it look a bit more grounded than the ethereal rest of the model. The armor will look non-metallic metal shiny at the end, but especially in person, it will deliver a subtle, different sensation than the other materials all around, plus a bit of real, oily residues in the junctions, like a realistic, well-kept armor should have. Setting an initial, simple rendering of the eyes and uh, the general expression with a kind of a micro sketch is my bridge with the brushwork stage. Building the model and uh, setting these uh, preparatory layers took me a day and a half, with also the drying time of millipat and oils included in the total. The brushwork is always the main protagonist and the funniest part of the work, so being efficient in these steps is really important for me, also to keep hype and inspiration at high levels. And I can assure you, I really need that extra energy, because every single molecule of this model will get its texture and extra definition. So, did you find any differences? I don't think so. And that's because I don't really change my process when working on gaming models or competition figures. My workflow is the formation of years of commission painting on armies, so it tends to fix a ton of visual information in the very initial stages, and the real difference is in the quantity of details I later add with the brushwork and their level of density per square millimeter. This way you immediately get solid gaming models, 
with a quick but powerful rendering of super important elements, like the contrast of values, well defined volumes, and an eye catching color scheme, that later are incredibly easy to bring to infinite higher levels of definition, with a variable amount of extra work that you can arbitrarily stop at any stage based on your needs. And on the display side of things, you take care of the preparatory work on really big figures in a matter of hours, leaving you more time and energy for the most artistic, rewarding and fun part. And if you feel the need of an in-depth overview of this specific brushwork, with a ton of examples in real time, simply check last week's live stream in my video library. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe! Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week guys!